Today we're going to be starting this video in Sunny Isles Beach. I am in a small little community here called Golden Shores. It's one of the only places in Sunny Isles Beach that actually has single family homes. I decided to walk this neighborhood today because I'm on my way to Aventura Mall to do some shopping, get some more of these tank tops for the videos, and uh, get some cologne so I can smell good for my woman. Anyways, uh, we're in for a treat too, guys, because I saw that there's quite a few houses for sale in this neighborhood. I'm sure they're expensive. Of course, I'll put up the listings on the screen I guess, so you guys can see what's happening here. But I'm sure anything in this area is going to come at a premium, no doubt. Now, today's going to be a viewer requested video. I don't often do these, but I thought the idea was pretty interesting and I wanted to explore it. And that is buyer's remorse, which you already know because you clicked on it. And this was suggested by one of my longtime loyal viewers, Ken from San Francisco. So, shout out to you, Ken, for making this suggestion for me. And I want to talk about this because a lot of people especially millennials over the past couple of years that have bought homes uh, when they were surveyed recently up to 82 percent of them said that they regret one aspect of their purchase at least something you know whether it be the price that they paid the amount of work that needs to be done on the house or maybe just the overwhelming amount of expenses that come with owning a house. There's a lot of different reasons why people have buyer's remorse, but I want to dive into this topic because I'm sure a lot of people out there watching may end up feeling like this at some point if you purchase in the past couple of years, or maybe not. Maybe you're very happy with your purchase and you got it in a really good low rate and you're thinking, I'm set for life. I'm going to have a great place to live at a good price. You know, good for you. I hope that is the case. But unfortunately, that's not the situation for everyone. So let's dive into this a little bit. I found this story of this 28-year-old woman from Portland, Oregon. So already that's the first sign of buyer's remorse right there. She bought somewhere in Portland. I would be regretting that too. <laughs> so this woman ended up buying a house and she pretty much did all the viewings online. She bought only the second house that she saw in person and this is probably one of the biggest aspects that I think people are going to have of buyer's remorse in the recent years is because supply was so tight during this, you know, feeding frenzy of people buying homes. And a lot of people were making offers sight unseen, waiving contingencies, and basically getting into any home that they could, not necessarily a home that they wanted. And it sounds like that's exactly what happened to this woman because she got into the place, realized it needed a ton of work. The place was disgusting. The carpet was disgusting, smelled like cat piss, you know, food crumbs all over the place, beard crumbs, you know, beard shavings on the, the bathroom sink, all kinds of things. You know, the place was just left as a disaster for her old nasty food in the fridge. And so it wasn't a very good welcome home or first impression of her new house, to say the least. And on top of that, she found out later on after she bought this place because it's in an HOA that her parking privileges were revoked due to the prior owner's negligence and uh, issues that they had with the association there. And now she has to go through this legal battle with the prior owner of the property to try and get her parking space back. So it's just been one nightmare after another for this woman. And unfortunately, guys, you know, these things, these stories are more common than you think. Now, here's another one. This one's for rent. This place is huge. Probably asking a lot. So what's been happening to people that are experiencing buyer's remorse is instead of taking the time to really shop around, like I've been telling you guys to do, and not be in a hurry, people are just buying the first thing that they can actually get a bid accepted on and not really thinking much past it. And we're gonna get more into this later in the video of some buying tips. That way you guys can avoid a lot of these mistakes. But right now I just wanna cover some of these experience that people have had. And from this article where I found some of these buyer's remorse stories, uh, some of the data that they had in there suggested that a lot of millennials were buying older homes that needed extensive renovations um, in an alternative to, you know, people 
overpaying and outbidding them on homes that were move-in ready. So they were thinking, let me get a fixer-upper. And in theory, that's usually a pretty good idea because you can do a value add and gain quite a bit of equity in the property if you can get it for the right price. But I think what happened is a lot of these millennials that ended up buying these fixer-uppers are quickly finding themselves in a situation that they just can't afford. They're realizing that the place needs a whole lot more work than they anticipated and they just don't have the wallet for it and they're going to have to resort to taking out loans just to fix the place up which is going to further increase their house payment. So, you know, these are all things that can be avoided guys by just having patience. This is, this is the number one thing I've been trying to drill home lately is just having patience because that's something that people just don't have these days and everyone was doing this FOMO buying you know thinking that they're never gonna be able to get a house ever again and look at this just six months later we're seeing inventory pop up left and right all over the country and that's just not the case that there's never gonna be another chance there's always gonna be another chance whether it's today tomorrow ten years from now there's gonna be a chance for you to buy a home okay so please don't fall into these traps and do not experience buyer's remorse because this can easily be avoided by just having patience, having a list of must-haves in your home, and only buying a home that you can truly afford that meets that list of criteria. And some of the other things to add real quick that was a big complaint for buyer's remorse for these people who were surveyed is bad neighbors, so they hate their neighbors. <laughs> Uh, a neighborhood that changed too much, meaning there's too much turnover, too many new people coming in and out. Um, also, that the upkeep and the maintenance was too expensive, more than they anticipated, as well as the fact that HOA fees and property taxes and increases for things like landscaping and new appliances, all these things going up were basically unanticipated expenses for a lot of these people who bought thinking they got the deal of a lifetime, but instead they ended up getting the headache of a lifetime. Now, I'm all for home ownership. Obviously, I'm in the real estate business, and I do think it's good to own your own home, but only if you can afford it, guys. That's the caveat. You know, you need to be able to afford your place if you're gonna want to be happy living there. So that's really the main thing. Got a brand new one going up over here. This place looks pretty massive. Although it's really just tall. It's a super narrow house. You can easily see the other side in there. It's tall and thin. Still, somebody's probably paying millions for it. Now, an interesting story I saw out of New Jersey today, which is going back to the remote work situation. New Jersey recently announced that um, there are 800 businesses that are getting state tax credits that they basically got from the state of New Jersey that allowed them to relocate to New Jersey and they basically give them a tax break for opening up shop in New Jersey and they gave about 8.7 billion dollars to these 800 businesses so quite a bit of money in tax breaks guys but guess what this comes with a caveat and that is they're requiring that these employers require their their employees to come back to work they're not going to be allowed to work remote no more because a lot of local economies are starting to suffer because of people not coming to the office this is happening in san francisco as well i've seen some recent news stories on that but now new jersey is actually doing something about it they're threatening to take away these tax breaks from these businesses if they don't require their employees to start coming back to the office at least three days a week so, I mean, there's a five day work week for most people. You gotta be in the office three days a week or the business is gonna lose the tax break. So let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, last time I mentioned remote work in one of my videos, a lot of people got all defensive about it. I'm definitely not someone who's against remote work. I think it is a good thing overall, but obviously it has some unintended consequences and this is one of them because a lot of local businesses that used to rely on you know people being in the office and coming in for their lunch break and things like that are no longer seeing this and that's what's becoming uh, the biggest issue here and New Jersey's putting their foot down saying you guys need to have people come back in or we're taking the money back and on top of that this is sparking 
um, a situation where other states are going to start looking at this as well. So keep this in mind, guys, because if you are a remote worker, there is a chance you could get called back to the office uh, if your company ends up in one of these situations. Check it out. We got one for rent here. There's people out there looking at the house. And right across the street, we got townhouses. Pretty new townhouses. So I think this story about remote work is an excellent reminder of just how important every piece is to the health of an economy, right? Remote work has its benefits for its employees and its employers, but at the end of the day, if the local economy where the business is supposedly located starts, you know, drowning because there's nobody left to patronize the businesses, then, you know, ultimately it brings the entire ship down, guys. So I can definitely see how this is a problem. Let me know what you guys think. Florida has gotten a ton of attention during the pandemic especially when we had so many people move here because we were basically the only state open for a while guys and being a resident here while this happened while i saw this boom in people coming here was basically unprecedented you know i've lived here for 14 years i've never seen such an influx of people in such a short period of time it was pretty astonishing well something interesting about that is now that all this is done now that we can't really say the pandemic is over right but it's definitely behind us right everybody most people are not worried about this anymore so and all the other states are open now as well you can have the freedom that you have in florida everywhere now not just here now that this pandemic shift has slowed down and not so many people are coming here for that reason no more the interesting thing is that florida is actually losing more people than it's gaining but not because people are moving out we're losing people because people are dying and they're not having enough kids as of june 22nd this year we had 106,000 people die in florida and only 96,000 births so our birth rate is well behind the death rate here which is not really that big of a surprise because we have a lot of senior citizens here that have come here to retire and this is one prediction i made in an earlier video if you remember that a lot of new inventory is going to come from dying seniors dying baby boomers guys it's going to happen it's happening right now especially here in florida and on top of that you have people my age that aren't having kids i don't have any kids i'm 35 years old and one of the reasons i don't have kids is because it's expensive guys it's a pain in the ass to have kids and uh, i might never have kids that's the reality um when i was younger i used to really feel like i wanted to have a family one day but the older i've gotten and the more i realize how tough life is um, you know just how difficult it was for me to get to the situation i'm at now it makes me wonder if I want to make it even harder, especially now that things are getting easier for me. You know, I finally feel more relaxed in life and more established. And, you know, to kind of like flush that all down the drain and start over by having a family is not the most appealing situation right now. And I'm sure a lot of other people my age feel the same way. And they just aren't having as many kids. So this is definitely going to be a problem moving forward for the whole country, not just Florida. Another one for sale, guys. This guy, Ozzy Vega, must dominate this area. This house looks pretty terrible compared to the other ones in this neighborhood, so I hope it's selling for a good deal. And I'm sure someone's probably going to knock this place down and turn it into one of these other mansions like behind there. And as you guys can see, I'm taking your advice since there's no sidewalks in a bunch of these neighborhoods. I'm walking on the opposite side of the street so I can see any cars coming. Now that the Fed has raised their interest rates another 75 basis points, we all knew this was going to happen. I thought they were going to raise it 100 basis points, but obviously they did not. And I just can't believe that these guys are now playing word games saying that this isn't a recession, even though technically it is. We already have had the second uh, quarter in a row of negative GDP growth, but yet these guys are claiming it's not a recession. Honestly, I don't think you can trust anything the government or the Fed is saying right now because of these 
word games they're playing with people, guys. It's just like saying, this isn't really summer. Technically it is, but you know, it's not actually warm enough to be summer. I mean, that's the kind of lunacy we're dealing with right now. And I wouldn't be trusting it if I were you, because first of all, uh, Jerome Powell has been wrong about all of his predictions so far. And I see some people say in the comments that Powell says this, Powell says that. Well, Powell said that inflation was transitory and now it's the, num it's the United States public enemy number one that these guys are trying to fight. And if you guys believe what these guys are saying, then you might as well call it quits now because obviously these guys don't know what the hell they're doing and they're just making up all kinds of things to make it sound like they do know what they're doing. For them to say that we're not actually in a recession when we technically are is a joke and it's a lie, guys. So <laughs> you can believe lies if you want to, but I know I don't. And they're saying that it's not a recession because the job market's still strong and that unemployment is still low. But if we look into past recessions, guys, this doesn't just all fall off a cliff overnight, just like the housing market. It takes time for all this to turn around. So yeah, maybe right now it's strong, but what's it gonna look like by the end of the year or the beginning of next year? I think it's gonna be a very different picture. We're seeing more companies just continue to do layoffs, okay? Shopify just did layoffs. There was another one I read about a couple days ago that did layoffs. So the amount of companies that are doing layoffs are just piling up, guys. They're not, the list isn't getting smaller, it's getting bigger. So I don't know, believe whatever you want, but I think that we're gonna see things still continue to move in a downward trend overall until inflation has been tamed because already inflation is taking a huge toll on lower income earners throughout the country because these guys just have to spend more of their income on everything that they need in life and obviously inflation is making everyday items more expensive so the less money you earn the more inflation is going to be hurting you and the more pain you're going to be feeling from this and if you guys believe powell his most recent quote after raising the rates says it doesn't make sense that the economy could be in recession with this kind of thing happening meaning that the job market and unemployment is strong so yeah, look how many times he's been wrong, and I think we're gonna see him wrong again as the situation in the economy overall starts to worsen. Now, going back to the buyer's remorse story from the beginning, I want to give you guys some tips that I read today that are pretty good tips, actually, I think, to help you prevent having buyer's remorse. So first of all, if you're buying in an HOA community, you wanna verify things like this woman went through with the parking situation. Make sure that none of these things are a problem before you agree to buy the place. You know, you can be under contract and find all this stuff out in your due diligence period before it's too late, before you can't back out of the contract and before you actually own the property. So be smart and research your HOA if you're going to be buying in one. And research also means look at their budgets, look at their minutes, look to see what they're spending their money on, how much is the maintenance fee going up every year, how many special assessments have there been? All kinds of things like this are extremely important in determining the health of the community you're gonna be buying in. Because at the end of the day, once you close, you're gonna be the one paying that HOA fee. So don't make the mistake that this woman from Portland did by not doing her research, just being desperate to get a home. The next thing is school districts. I've had a lot of people ask me over the years that have moved to Miami, you know, where are the best schools? And the article actually says not to uh, rely on your real estate agent for advice on school districts. And I would agree, guys. Um, every time someone has asked me about it, I always tell them that uh, Bell Harbor, the 33154 zip code has the best schools in the area, which is true. Um, so I always recommend people move there and that's why that area is so expensive is because of the schools. But you as the buyer need to do your own due diligence if you have kids or you're planning on having kids to see if the area is in fact going to be a good school district for your kids. And the next thing is demographics. Um, one of the tips that they gave in this article, which I love, is to do exactly what I'm doing right now. Walk the neighborhood and see if you see any of the neighbors, Stop and talk to them. If uh, you see people, just get an overall vibe for who lives there. You can figure out, do people have money here? 
Is it trashy? People leave their stuff in the lawn. Are there kids playing in the street? What's the overall vibe of the community? And I personally think, especially after doing a lot of these neighborhood walks, that this is the best way to really determine the overall vibe or atmosphere of a neighborhood is just simply by walking through it, guys. And I think most people never really do this. Just driving through is not the same because when you're on foot like this, you're more vulnerable, right? And you're more likely to encounter someone who's also walking or just standing in their front yard or whatever. And when you're just driving by, you're not going to have that face-to-face -face interaction. And I think doing something this simple could really be a great way to assess if the neighborhood you're interested in is going to be for you or not. Another one for rent. I told you guys we're going to have lots to see today because as I was coming in the neighborhood here, I saw all these for sale and for rent signs. So I wanted to make sure to get all this for you. Probably this one's not going to be on the MLS so I probably won't be able to show it since it looks like it's probably for rent by owner. But you can call for yourself and find out how much they're asking. Now the next thing they say to look out for in a neighborhood, which this one may or may not be so important to you, is the political climate. Now you guys know I don't really discuss politics on this channel and for good reason, but I think it is probably important for people because, you know, at the end of the day, the more you're surrounded by like-minded neighbors, then probably the more balanced of a lifestyle you're going to have and the easier it's going to be to make friends with people. Now, I think it's horrible that people in different political parties literally can't get along these days because of opposing views. And before I finish this list, I wanted to share something with you guys that I thought was extremely interesting. I saw this article from CNN talking about a new political party that's coming up. And they're going to be called Forward. And one of the leaders of this new party is Andrew Yang. Uh, he was a presidential candidate in 2020. Another one for rent. Looks like probably for rent by owner also. Lots of listings over here. But anyhow, this whole thing is kind of spearheaded by Andrew Yang. And the idea behind this new political party is they're going to be bringing together both Democrats and Republicans to join this new party who agree on how to handle certain important issues like abortion, like immigration, like climate change, like our national debt. All types of these big problems that we have in our country that really aren't being solved right now because neither party is doing their job. And it said in this article that 62% of Americans right now want a third party, which is a record high because they see that our leaders aren't getting it done. And to tell you what, guys, I am part of that 62%. I am a registered independent, okay, in the state of Florida. I don't believe in really being attached to a party because I believe in ideas, not the letter next to your name. That's been my belief ever since I started voting, and I think it will always be that way unless something like this comes along that really is in the center enough on all these issues that they can actually start solving things, then I think this could be a potential game changer in politics so long as they don't get completely corrupted like all the other parties. So we'll see what happens with this. But I wanted to mention it in this video because even though with all these crazy things happening, at the end of the day, I'm an optimist and I never expected anything like this to happen in our lifetime. And my wife asked me something about this when I told her the story. She said, well, what's going to be the difference between this or an independent? And I said, well, I think the main difference is the fact that they're literally bringing together people from both sides of the aisle to unify and join this party as one. And that's exactly what our nation needs right now. We need people more coming together than people being split apart. So I think because that they're doing that, this might help them succeed. And they're looking to run a potential presidential candidate in 2024. So we'll see how that goes. It sounds pretty good so far. And I'm sure we'll hear more about this as time goes on. And then the last thing to avoid buyer's remorse is if you're buying in a community that was built in say the last five to eight years, then you need to be hyper aware 
of the land use around you because what's been happening in order to make these developments cheaper in a lot of these new neighborhoods is that they are not including the cost of uh, roadway renovations or new plumbing or things like that need to be done or underground utilities, whatever might need to be done in the neighborhood, they're not including this a lot of times in the cost of these new builds. And if you live in one of these newly development communities, you could potentially be on the hook for these extra fees that have not been paid. Because basically how it works is everyone in the neighborhood will have to come together and pay a portion of these costs that haven't been paid. So be aware of that if you're buying in a newer neighborhood if you're buying somewhere older and more established like this, it's probably not going to be a problem, but it's just one more thing to pay attention to to make sure you don't have regrets in the end. If you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and check out my next video on the screen right over here, and I'll catch you over in the next one.